there has always been a clear political agenda to so-called modernist art. Mm -hmm. And there is an excellent book, um, which incidentally a copy uh, of which was sent by the author to Rand, although she'd never mentioned it in her writings, but it turned up in a, in a sale of, her, of books in her own library. There is a book by, and I've totally forgotten the name of the guy, and I've totally forgotten the name of the book, so we're going to have to insert that in a little while, mm -hmm. um, which, which quotes verbatim from um, uh, the creators of modern art and shows how most of them had both a political agenda, which was not merely the destruction of, the, of old art, but the reasons for it. And the reasons were they almost all adhered to various forms of political collectivism, um, whether they were sort of fascistic or national socialistic, you know, or, or sort of high Tory collectivism, um, um, or Marxist and socialist in various ways. And they all adhered to those sorts of ideologies. They all saw their art as attempts to undermine rational thinking, normal human responses to the arts. And indeed, um, this book even calls it calls them the form of Satanism, although the author isn't any, by any means a theist, but that they all in fact attempted to create a form of art which would destroy um, the rational perceptions and logical ways of thinking of Western man and, of course, of Western liberal orientation. This was quite explicit. Uh, there was also another element amongst some of these modernist thinkers in which because capitalism was bringing all the great high arts to the masses, and um, because they loathed the masses and saw themselves as an artistic elite, simply tried to create a new art that would not be popular because, and of course not popular, because it's inherently unartistic and unbeautiful and, and unattractive and satisfies right. no human needs, that they therefore created various forms of modernist art specifically in order to exclude the masses from their appreciation so that they could therefore always hold, oh, here is this area of refined art to which only a small elite can appreciate and understand. And again, of course, that's linked directly to an elitist political position. These, almost all these modernist thinkers were, in this sense, politically elitists. They felt they wanted to erect barriers between the masses and between a so-called elite of the refined um, who should be um, uh, subsidised and supported by the state and, and, and in turn who would support the political causes of the state. Um, and this is outlined very well by a number of other writers, including um, Casey, um, more recently, who's outlined some of this, um, and also this guy whose book has totally escaped my, my memory for the moment. Um, so, indeed, modernist art, it, it is no accident that modernist art, which appeals to, to no one honestly and no one with any rational um, or normal human tastes, uh, is being promoted by the establishment. It's being promoted by the establishment because, in a sense, the establishment is these people. <laughs> what, what's happened is that a, is a, is that a, a specific... Uh, this is where we need class analysis. Class analysis doesn't simply just describe classes on the basis of, uh, like, the socialists, uh, the results of the forces of production and somehow related to the means of production. This is nonsense. They can, uh, classification can be upon any means and classes can form... Uh, can form as classes for themselves on the basis of all sorts of weird and wonderful um, uh, characteristics and causes. And the simple fact is, is that, a, that a group of individuals have um, gained power, privilege and profit by promoting so-called modern art, by in effect discriminating against real classical realist art, um, and yes, this also serves the purposes of other elites very well. Um, because um, it, it's again, it, it, it does it because of this, this sort of pseudo elitism. It sort of establishes if, if you can also get people to professing appreciation and love for something which is complete nonsense. This is a form of manipulation of people's minds. It's a form of mind control. You know, if you can if you can enforce these sorts of likes and dislikes upon people, then you can enforce anything upon them. So I think there's a broader area which needs exploring, hasn't been explored, uh, by which it's precisely making people, making in inverted commas, or getting them to express, in effect, false preferences for complete crap, is also part and parcel of the broader manipulation of the mm. mass mind um, by the state. Would you say then that it is impossible for a reasonable person 
actually moved by Tracy Eamons on Made Bed? Yes. 